Can I explain to you why yeah. I'm vegan? You're right. It's terrible. Vegan. He's like, why aren't I vegan? More like, why am I? For the animals, bro. Obviously. Because I'm not a lion. Obviously. Because carrots don't feel pain. Obviously. You know what I'm saying? I want you to convince me now. I don't know. We'll talk, see what happens. All right. How are you, my friend? Are you Jewish? Yes. Ah, oh, bless you, mate. And uh, where are you from? From Washington, D.C. Washington. Would you mind? Yeah. Just a little bit like that, All right. so then we can hear you. All right, so I'm asking people why, why they aren't vegan, and are you going to tell me why you're not vegan? So I just really like the taste of meat, and okay. I always feel that, like, even, like, though, like, not eating meat would, like, reduce the cause, but I feel like Already in the supermarkets, like there's all this meat, and like if no one eats it, it's just gonna go to waste. Okay, but why is it there to begin with? Because the demand is high for meat. Okay, so how, what can you do to change that? Um, I think you can like supermarkets can gather numbers of people who are actually who actively shop there and actually buy meat, so they can cut down the amount that they're ordering. Hopefully, that'll cut down the amount that of animals are killing. You don't think there's a direct like relationship between the demand and supply, or do you think they just kill? All these animals and just throw it all away and keep killing animals and stocking up the... There's obviously like, they only supply it because people demand it, yeah? Yeah. Otherwise they would take it off the shelf and put something else there, yeah? Yeah. That's how uh, businesses do usually work. If it's not selling, they don't sell it. But I feel like so many people are like, don't know why, like they don't know why being vegan is good, so like... Can I explain to you why yeah. I'm vegan? Yeah. Okay, so you know how you're having a conscious experience right now. If something bad was to happen to you or something good was going to happen to you, you would experience those things as either good or bad. You, know, yeah. you have your own subjective experience of reality. So to be imprisoned, enslaved or tortured or harmed yeah. is bad for you, which is why we have human rights protecting yeah. people from bad things happening, yeah? Mm. Animals actually share that trait with us. Well, the ones that we eat definitely do, not all animals like oysters yeah. and things like that, but pigs and cows, you don't eat pigs obviously. Yeah. Cows, lambs, chickens, yeah. dairy cows, egg laying hens, fish, they all share Maybe slightly, you know, there's gradient here, but they share a conscious experience. What happens to them also matters to them. So why do we have rights for humans and not rights for these animals who also have a conscious experience? So my, my argument is if we don't need to harm, kill and eat these animals for to thrive or to survive or for any reason, other than, like you said, taste, yeah. then why are we doing it to them for? So I might as well just boycott the harm to animals that I can and be vegan. But I feel like... What do you think of that first? I think Before you come back with your, I your think, answer. I think it makes sense because I like what you're saying because like we're all here on this earth and like we all contribute. Okay. Definitely animals contribute, you know, sometimes more than we do. Like, you know, like bees, like if we weren't for bees, like our plants wouldn't be, you know. Okay. And like, I think that it's important, but I also think that like survival of the fittest, like humans came to this world and took over. Like if, if we were in here, like if the dinosaurs wanted to eat us all, then they would control everything. Like I feel like the way we advance, like we became more powerful than these animals that we're eating. And like, it's like the food chain for animals. Like, we're on the top. Okay, I get you, I get you. So you're making like a might makes right argument. Do you know what that is? Not really. It's like, because we're more mighty, powerful, more intelligent. We basically have just cause to do this to the vulnerable beings like yeah. pigs. Well, I'm gonna say pigs, because most good. people yeah, watching do eat pigs. Pigs, cows, chickens, fish. We can basically control them, we can breed them, we can manipulate them, and we can slaughter them. And your argument is it's because it's survival of the fittest and we can do it, therefore it's justified kind of thing. That's might makes right. It's I like, guess, but I'm saying like, we could have a society where lions just go eat humans and then they'd be like, where's human rights? If, if exactly. all the animals are eating Oh, rights. exactly. Yeah. And that would be wrong yeah. as a human. Do you think it's wrong from the perspective of a chicken? What do you mean? Like, do you think it, the chicken feels like it's justified what happens to them? Like Probably maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying if they could express to us what they're feeling about this, you know, because they probably just don't know what's going on. Chickens are actually killed at like 40 days old, so they're just little babies, but they're in overgrown bodies, so they don't really get to grasp what's happening to them, but they know they're suffering. Yeah. They feel terrible, and then they uh, go to a slaughterhouse, kosher slaughterhouse or whatever, they're still yeah. getting their throat cut and having their experience robbed from them. I have like a more at ease eating kosher food just because like in like the realm of, of hurting animals, because it doesn't hurt them, and like they slaughter them so that they're dead immediately. But also I have a question for you, like what, what do you think about like eggs and milk? Like that doesn't hurt the animal. Well, I think slashing someone's head off hurts the animal, yeah. one. I think that harms the animal and also yeah. murders the animal. And my argument is if we don't need to do that, why would we? Yeah. Why would we try to find some 
humane religious way of cutting animals' heads off if we don't need to. Yeah. Like, why are we always trying to find this this good way of doing something horrible, yeah. which is to mass murder? Yeah. You know. And what was your? I was asking, what about like your viewpoint on like eating eggs and milk? Yeah, obviously. and eggs and milk. So my, my argument would would still hold even if they weren't caused like needless suffering beforehand. Because I'm an animal rights activist, I believe they should have rights protecting them. Now, in the dairy and egg industries, you're talking about two industries that contain more suffering than the meat industries in, in really? many cases. Yeah, because they, those animals are exploited for a product that comes out of them. They're kept alive through prolonged suffering. So, like, the dairy cows, how do they produce milk? Do you know? Uh, Why do they produce milk? For <laughs> us. No, actually, they don't. Why does, why oh, does, your, mom, why does your mother... For their kids, yeah. For their children, yeah? Yeah. So, in order for, like, a human woman to begin producing milk, what does what needs to happen? She has to have a kid. Exactly. Oh, so they force them, I see. And they do it in a very crude way. Do you want me to explain the way to you? How old are you? Uh, 15. 15. Can may okay. I explain? Are these are your parents? No, they're my grandparents. Grandparents. I'm going to explain the way. I think 15 is old enough to know what happens in the dairy industry, considering you drink out of yeah. there. So basically, they get a male bull, and they uh, take okay. the semen from him. Leave it up to your imagination how they do that. Very crude. And then they take that semen and uh, inject it into the female. But what they do first is they put her in, in a rack so she can't move. And they stick their entire arm up her anus to hold the cervix. And then they get the pipette of semen and they guide it in whilst holding the cervix through the anus. So disturbing? Yeah, disturbing? definitely disturbing. Right. Now they do that because it's a more effective way of impregnation. So it's called AI. I yeah. call it rape myself. When she becomes pregnant, she has a nine month pregnancy. She just carries her calf for nine months in her stomach. Immediately after birth, the calf is taken because the calf will drink the milk that's meant for yeah, the humans. So we can steal it. If the calf is a male, they don't use them in the dairy industry, they kill them. They'll, you know, maybe two weeks later, maybe four weeks later, maybe for veal, maybe for beef, but they will always kill the males. The females will go off to, to confinement and uh, they'll be grown and used in the same way. She'll go through about three, four, five cycles of pregnancy. Kids being taken, lameness, they get mastitis because they're producing so much milk. Then they go to slaughterhouse for burgers. Jeez. Now, these cows in the dairy industry, they don't necessarily go to get kosher slaughtered. So you're putting into demand an industry that doesn't even do something that is in alignment with your religious beliefs anyway, yeah. because they just go to any slaughterhouse and get minced up into burgers. Yeah. That's dairy. Now, eggs, the males don't be used either. Upon hatching, the males get gassed or they uh, go to a macerator, which is a big blender. In America, they'll go to a big blender. They wake up out the egg and they go into a big blender. The females get taken, they get grazed, and they'll be used for their eggs for about 18 months. So they're pushing an egg out a day, 300 a year or something like that, which puts strain on their body. They lose calcium, they lose nutrients, they die on their faces in the, in the barns. That's free range as well. We waltz around into these farms and do investigations yeah. and you can see enough footage from there. But then they all go to a gas chamber when they're not producing enough eggs anymore yeah. and they get minced up. Pet How food or processed, in, in, in America, processed uh, chicken products. So the, those industries are the meat industry, essentially. I mean, I think it's like, it's definitely very gruesome and like it definitely changes my way of like is it justified it, nah. we talk about for an egg here yeah? and for yeah. breast milk which when did you wean i don't know probably about what two years old you stopped breastfeeding probably still it's like, breastfeeding to this day <laughs> i think that's different because like it's like when you think about it just with one chicken and one cow like whatever it's easy to think about that but then the way you're explaining it with like how it works within a cycle is like definitely crazy to hear. Well, how many people do we have on earth? A lot. And everyone wants milk and eggs and fish and yeah. everyone wants beef, everyone wants lamb, everyone wants chickens. Yeah. So nowadays, it's factory farms to meet demand. I'm still against the backyard throat slashing, but now we have factory farms which entail a lot of suffering and cruelty as well. Yeah. well I'll tell you, today I've pretty much eaten all vegan. I haven't had any meat or fish oh, really? or stuff like that today. Maybe I'll try it for a day and uh, spread the word if I like it. Yeah, so wait, wait, so you're not vegan because of, if it's, at first it was cost, right? No, it was taste. It was taste. Like, it's just like, okay, let's talk about taste, because do you think that because you derive like sensory pleasure from an action that justifies what happens to the animals in order to, to get that taste pleasure? I mean, like, it's kind of a tough question to answer because like in the moment you're not thinking about that. Of course. Of course you don't, but now you are. Yeah. Now you're thinking, so what, what you could weigh up, you could go, okay, the, the, the animals experience a knife in the throat, a life in a factory farm. They lose their life, they lose their children, they, they suffer a lot of the time, most of the time. Just so you can have a five minute meal, how long did it take to eat a sandwich? Five, ten, minute? ten minutes. Do you remember what sandwich you ate last Wednesday? No. So you've forgotten about it? Yeah. You've forgotten about that sandwich and that animal went through that for it, just for that quick taste. You're right. It's terrible. Yeah, well, Jeez. it is, it is uh, well, I think about this is why I'm vegan. But you, you can actually make 
you can actually take actions in your day-to-day -day life. Where you, you know, the, the, and we're not talking about a big taste difference. We're talking about a small taste difference because we've got vegan cheese, vegan meats. We've got amazing vegan food and pasta and pizza and ice cream and but products. Pizza is a vegan. Yeah, but you can get vegan pizza. I'm saying. Is it as good? Well, mate, let's just say it's let's just say it's 10% not as good. Do you think that 10% justifies what happens to the animals in order to produce it? You know what I mean? And we're talking about a small taste difference, yeah. marginal, and I don't miss anything now. Now that I've been vegan for... How long have you been vegan for? Nearly 10 years. It'll be 10 years November the 1st this year. Feels good to be vegan. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I have to go, but this is definitely a very eye-opening conversation. Bless you, my friend. What's your name again? Lior. Lior. Lior? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Lior. Take Let's care. See. Hope you can convince other people. <laughs> did we convince you? Pretty or did we create some awareness? See. My conscience is different now. You can look up uh, some footage online. Uh, you can watch a film called Dominion. Dominion, and uh, you'll see how animals are treated in each industry. Where is this posted? YouTube. Oh, I'll see you. TikTok. <laughs> Bless you, friend. Take care. See you later. Yeah, that sandwich last week meant nothing to him, but it meant everything to the animals. Someone had a conversation like that with me when I was 15. I'd be like, what? What? I gotta look into this. Cheers, brother. I apologize. You should be vegan. This is your sign, actually. This is your sign. He said he apologizes because he's not vegan, but he watches all my videos and I'm right. Yeah, don't apologize to me, mate. I'm not the one getting chopped up.